Hey guys, I'm John Setzler and welcome back to Atlanta Grill Company. I hope everybody's ready for Thanksgiving. So today we're going to do something a little different. I'm going to show you how to make homemade bacon from pork belly. So let's get started. We're going to get this bacon project started with a nice piece of pork belly here. I've got a piece that I've trimmed up. I've kind of tried to square it up a little bit so it'll work nicely for this bacon project. And there's a couple things you need to know when you're making bacon. And it's all about getting the right amount of curing salt for the weight of meat you've got. So this is a real easy project if you've got a kitchen scale. You need to know exactly how much your bacon weighs. And I've weighed this piece, and this piece weighs 1,077 grams, which is just a little over a kilogram. But that tells me how much curing salt I need. To cure this bacon, the cure that I'm going to use this time is I'm going to use Morton's Tender Quick. And what this basically is, is a mixture of salt, sugar, and curing salt. And if you don't have access to Morton's Tender Quick, I'm going to give you a recipe in the video description where you can make this from scratch. But what we want to do in order to cure this piece of bacon is I want to use 2.5% of the meat's weight in curing salt and that works out to about 27 grams on this piece so what I'm gonna do is take part of that curing salt there and I'm just gonna rub it in to the top of this piece of pork belly and we're gonna let that sit for a couple of minutes and let it adhere to the bacon or to the pork belly and then I'm gonna flip it over and we're gonna do the same thing on the other side and any that falls off there I'm just gonna make sure I collect it because we're gonna put it in our bag so now that I've got all my curing salt on this meat I'm gonna put mine in a vacuum seal bag if you don't have a vacuum sealer put this in a gallon ziplock bag and get all the air out that you can once you have your pork belly with the cure in your Ziploc bag or in your vacuum seal bag, what we're going to want to do is just toss this guy in the refrigerator. We're going to let this cure for seven days. Uh, and if you're using a Ziploc bag, you're going to want to come by your refrigerator at least once a day and just flip the bag over and kind of massage the liquid that's going to come out of the pork belly. Just massage it around the outside and toss it back in their fridge so we'll be back in seven days we've been going seven days here on the pork belly with the uh, Morton tender quick cure and I've been like I said taking this out of the refrigerator every day and just kind of giving it a rub to make sure that we've had good contact so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take this out of the bag and I'm just gonna rinse it off and towel dry it and we'll be right back the next thing I want to do with this bacon after I have it rinsed off and dried is I want to make a little bit of a sweet glaze to go on here. I'm going to use a little bit of the run amok maple syrup that's got cinnamon and vanilla in it. And I'm going to use my measuring cup here and I'm going to pour out uh, about a quarter of a cup of this maple syrup into my measuring cup. And then I'm going to put a... Uh, a splash of some bourbon in here with it and we're gonna give that a quick mix maybe two tablespoons of bourbon and I'm just gonna take one of my measuring spoons and kinda give that a mix to get that equalized and I've put my pork belly back in another clean vacuum seal bag and I'm gonna dump our maple syrup and bourbon mixture into this and then I'm gonna kinda spread that around a little bit let that get on all surfaces of this pork belly and then I'm gonna take it back and vacuum seal it so I've got our bourbon and maple syrup mixture 
in the uh, vacuum seal bag and what I'm going to do is just once again make sure I've got it completely coated and when you're using vacuum seal you can get away with a lot less of this so what I'm going to do now is put this back in the refrigerator for uh, 24 more hours. It's about time to smoke our bacon so I want to make a seasoning rub that I can put on the outside of this you can use whatever you like, but I don't want to add any more salt to this since it's already cured. So I'm going to start out here with a simple rub that's going to be a tablespoon of black pepper, a tablespoon of paprika, one teaspoon of granulated garlic, one teaspoon of granulated onion. And I'm just going to take my whisk and mix that together and I'm going to put it in a shaker. Okay, I've got my amazing uh, pellet tube smoker here. This is the 12-inch one. I've got it stuffed full of pellets that, uh, in my case, are the B&B &B oak, pecan, and cherry blend. And I'm going to use my torch, and I'm going to get that lit. I'm going to hold my torch on there for about 20 seconds. And then I'm going to just let that burn for a moment and I may actually need to hit that again. We're gonna let that burn with the visible flame for a minute or two. And after that's had time to burn for a couple of minutes, I'm just gonna blow out the flame and I'm gonna take this uh, accessory rack off and I'm gonna set this down in the bottom of the firebox of my Kamado Joe. If you've got a different grill, uh, it probably will work better than this. Uh, Kamado Joe's hold heat very well, so if you've got a less efficient grill or container, you can do this in any kind of container you want. So I'm going to set that accessory rack back down there, and I'm going to put the heat deflectors right on top, and then I'm going to set my grill grates up here on top, and just let that smoke for a few minutes while we go get our bacon seasoned and ready to come onto the grill. So I've taken our pork belly back out of our vacuum seal bag that had the maple syrup and bourbon in it and I'm just going to uh, season both sides of this with some of that rub we just made and I'm just going to take that with my hand and spread that out evenly on the fat side of this and then I'm going to flip it over and hit the meat side most of the rest of that rub we just made and I'm gonna let that sit for a few minutes and then we're gonna take it to the grill okay I'm gonna set our pork belly slab right there in the middle of that grill and I'm gonna close the close the dome the bottom vent is gonna be set fully open and I'm just going to pull the top vent completely off. And I'm going to let this go until our smoker tube dies out. I'm going to get four to six hours worth of smoke from that tube. And then I'll evaluate if I want to go any further than that. We've been going almost five hours now. And uh, this guy's taking on some smoke color that looks pretty decent. But I think what I'm going to do is let it go for another five hours and I'm gonna pull this off momentarily I'm gonna take my pellet tube out even though it's still burning I'm gonna reload it relight it and put it back in here and we'll be back to have another look at this in about five more hours and before I unload this amazing uh, or the amazing pellet tube I just wanted to show you where it is it's burned almost all the way down to the very end of the 12 inch tube and like I said we're right at about the five hour mark that thing's probably gonna smoke for another 20 maybe maybe 30 minutes so uh, you're looking at five to five and a half hours of total smoke time on that tube We've been going nine hours now, and I believe this is about where I want it to be. Uh, some people like to smoke longer, some people like to smoke shorter. So whatever works for you is how long you should smoke this. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take this thing off the grill. Uh, my grill 
the internal temperature in my grill here has been about 90 degrees for the last several hours so I'm going to take this out and I'm going to set it on a rack and I'm going to let it cool for about an hour in the refrigerator before I vacuum seal this because we're going to I'm going to vacuum seal this and let this sit for a day or two before I slice it. I've let that bacon equalize for another day or two in the refrigerator before I sliced it apart here. I want you to have a look at that. That just looks beautiful. I made me a couple of nice thick slices here. I'm heating up a pan and uh, we're gonna cook some of this. All right, I've got my pan warmed up. So we're gonna throw a few slices of this right here in our Finex pan and give it a quick cook. And homemade bacon doesn't cook quite like your store-bought bacon. It takes a little longer to cook this, especially with the thick slices. And after a couple of minutes on there, I'm going to give these guys a flip. Heck yeah, that's looking good. Let that finish cooking here. And after a couple of more minutes, I'm going to pull this off and let it drain on a paper towel for a couple of minutes. And after I've let that drain here for just a moment, I'm going to take off a little piece off the end of here and we'll give that a try. Oh yeah. Hmm. This bacon has a beautiful flavor. It's not over salty, which is a really nice characteristic of homemade bacon. This particular cure with just the tender quick is just the right amount of salt for this amount of meat and the time that we cured it. Um, it's a little less salty than a typical cure and I really like the flavor of it. I can actually taste, I'm getting hints of that uh, maple syrup and bourbon that we uh, soaked this in for that last day and it's got a really beautiful sweet flavor to that. So guys, if you've never made bacon before, here's the easy way to do it. So give this a try. Let me know what you think. Until next time, this is John Setzler with Atlantic Grill Company. Mm -hmm.